Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. As you see behind me, I've got a whole plethora of PCs. I got all these from for free and they were gonna be thrown out anyway, so I'm like, well, I gotta see what's inside them. So today's video is going to be a PC haul review. We're gonna be um, testing these out, seeing what's inside of them, see if they even start up. Some don't have hard drives, some don't have a door for the side panel. I might be able to scavenge parts, build a better PC from some of these, but really we're going to do a PC haul review and show you what I got and we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's start off with some of the obvious older Dells here and see if they even start up and let you see what's inside of them. Come on, I'm excited. Let's go. So the first one we got here is a Dell. It's got XP Home, or it did at one point. And it's got a Pentium 4 inside, and that's all I know about it. But it also has a compact disc reader. It looks like a rewritable CD-R. And it's a Dimension 2350. And, you know, it's got USB on the front ports and the audio. I think I can go two ways with this testing. I could uh, use my power supply tester, uh, or I could just throw caution to the wind and uh, plug it in, see if it boots up. I mean, what am I gonna do, fry a free, uh, free PC, yeah? For some of these, I think that's what I'll do, is I'll just plug them in like this Dell and the other Dell, see if it starts up, and we'll go from there. And maybe we can get into the BIOS and see what they have for CPU and RAM. Um, if they have a hard drive, maybe they'll even boot into Windows, see what they have on there. So on the back of the case here, we have PS2 ports, parallel, serial. We have onboard video and we have four uh, USB ports as an Ethernet and just standard microphone, audio and output. And then it, it looks like a modem here. Now I clean these a little bit outside not much, but I just enough so I could stand having them inside the house without having them gross me out. So they're not 100% clean. So this one has a case cover, which is good. It looks like there's no hard drive here, but there is a floppy drive. Power supply is here. It's got a heat sink for the Pentium, but no active cooling other than the side exhaust fan. One stick of RAM, no AGP. But we do have three PCI slots, so that's something, right? And let's see if we can hook up the test monitor and power this on. Got the uh, PS2 keyboard that I got for free, brand new one, new old stock. And the PC is plugged in. And it looks like we have power, but it keeps rebooting. That's not good. Well, let's shut this off. Let's hook up the power supply tester. With the power supply tester is hook up a 24 or 20 pin to here and at least a uh, Molex 4 pin here. And this also has a connector for the motherboard power for a four or eight pin. And also can test video card six pin. And it should give me an output and tell me what's what. Power supply tester is hooked up right here. It'll give me a beeping code and it'll tell the voltages. So let's get the power on the power supply and see what happens. Why? Well, the 12 volt rail, they're low. The 11.8, 11.9. Five volt rails, 5.1, that's good. Yeah, the 12 volt rails are a little low, so I'm thinking it could be something with that. Could be the RAM. We can pull the RAM, see if we have something, maybe troubleshoot. Plug this thing back in. I thought it was the power supply for sure, but it would have told me immediately with an error code, so, and a beep code, so who knows. Could be the RAM, could be the CPU. So this is a 256 meg DDR266. That's what we have for RAM in here. And I'm gonna populate it in the other bank just to see. Maybe it's a problem at the bank. Oh, hi, yeah, powered it on. Reseated the connections for the power and it powered on. Two gigahertz Pentium 4, 256 meg of RAM. No hard drive, so we've got this one working. So let's shut it off and see what the next Dell has. I swapped the dim from the first bank to the second bank, reseated all the power cables on the motherboard and turned it on and it worked. So sometimes a little bit of that troubleshooting, just simple things, can fire a system back up to life. 
But the power supply tester, even though the voltages on the 12 volt rail were just a little low, it didn't tell me there was an error, a fault error or anything on that to the point where the power supply was dead. So that's why I went ahead and did that. Quick, easy. Let's go on to the next Dell and I'm pretty sure it's probably got similar specs because it looks the same. Let me get this set up right back. So the next Dell is a 2350 series dimension. It's really quite dirty, gross, but it has a Pentium 4. There is no hard drive, but there is a CD-ROM drive in here. Three PCI slots, two sticks of RAM. This one has a broken retention uh, clip on the top of the CPU cooler. So if I turn it on, it's gonna be a real short ride, meaning that it's probably gonna overheat and I don't have a plastic mounting bracket that, that you secure the heat sink with with the bracket. So we'll see if we can power it on really quick, see if it posts. Let's just power it on and see what happens. There's no hard drive in here. So that one's in worse shape. Maybe I can pull the parts out of one, double, triple the RAM up on the good one. But if one has a faster CPU, I could shift it over to the, the better one with the door on the case. Grab a fan from this one, put it in the front for intake, increasing airflow. You know, you could do a bunch of things, part it out, depends on what you want to do. Fans on, power's on, there is no yelling at me from the system, but it's not coming on. So I sent some things up with the system. And this has good voltages, 12 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.4 on a 3 volt rail. That's interesting, because who, who thought that these old junk Dells would have power supplies that last it that long? This is 2.2 gigahertz Pentium 4. So if it's functional, we have a potential upgrade for the other Dell and that 200 more megahertz. And there's RAM, let's see what the RAM is. It says a 256 mag DDR dim. And what else? And it has another 128 mag DDR dim. This standard DDR, 384 meg of RAM. Not so bad for the PC parts haul at least. We'll see what we can make of these and uh, move on to the next PC. PC number three from the PC parts haul. This is a compact Presario. It says it has a 2.7 Intel Celeron processor. It says 512 mega RAM, 20 gig hard drive, DVD, CD-RW drive, and a DVD-ROM drive. XP is floppy and the two drives up front, two USB front panels. The hard drive is intact. Floppies here in the two drives. And we see as a Cooler Master cooler, it could be aftermarket, but I'm not sure. The caps look okay, but there's some rust on the bottom. Looks like water damage or something. Water might have gotten in there. I don't know. One stick of RAM, which, and the power supply here is a high pro quality power supply not will this power on what does it have i don't know but we're gonna find out right now EGA output and these older celerons and these older uh penny of four chips if there's a video output on the motherboard there that means that you know that chip for the graphics is on board it could be s3 verge i don't know what it had back in the day who knows but test monitor's up. We want to see if this turns on. And it is turning on. And we got a beep, and then it's shut off. Compact. Oh, but it died. Power supply. Maybe. Loose connection. Great. Something's happening that hates life. So I pulled the compact CPU cooler off and looked at the CPU. It is indeed a Celeron 2.7 gigahertz with a 400 megahertz front side bus from what I can see. It has a 512 meg stick of PC 2700 DDR RAM. The power supply tested good on that one, but it won't boot. There's like a short somewhere or something. The next PC I have here is a newer gen, believe it or not, with this 
Ultra case. I don't know who makes it. It's a little bit dusty, but I did clean it up a little bit outside again. It says it has an i5 inside. Does it? Well, I hope so. A couple USB ports on the front. Looks like a super multi-disc reader writer on there. Power button is here, which is weird, but We'll turn it around and show you what the back looks like. Power supply is on the bottom on this one and it looks like a no name, no brand, blah, 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 crap power supply. But this board has USB, maybe 3.0, they're blue. Two PS2 ports on the top and up here we have just the regular USB standards, speeds, two down here, onboard ethernet, and then your audio output headphone microphone dvi port and a vga onto the board take the case apart i have an msi board pci express slot but that's pretty it pretty much it it has a pci express 1x slot i believe right here and it's a b85 mp33 board uh the drive has a power hooked up to it for the sata connector but no hard drive in the bay whatsoever which is a large case fan in the front for airflow. Wonder if it works or not. Well, there's a number of slots for bays that you can populate three and a half inch drives. 450 watt ultra power supply ATX. I don't trust this thing whatsoever. And up here, just got the generic uh, Intel cooler. Two sticks of XMS3 Corsair RAM. I think it's DDR3. Pretty sure. DDR3, 133 megahertz. If it works, that means it's somewhat capable, but what processor is in here? Does it boot up? I don't know. Um, let's put this back and find out, shall we? Power button is being pressed. We have fan power. <gasps> oh, we got post. What's going on? Keyboard's not working. That's what's going on. See if we can't get into the BIOS. Okay, into the BIOS. Looks like we're getting into the BIOS, everyone. Or maybe the BIOS is screwed up. Maybe they've screwed up a flash. Maybe they messed up something. It says entering setup though. I don't hold high hope for this system. It's just like powered and rebooted. We can pull the CPU, heatsink, and fan. Find out what chip is in here, at least. And I have the power tester on 12 volt rails at 12.6, 12.5, 5.1 and 5 volt. It's another 12 volt volt says 12.6 and then 3.3 on the three volt rail, but the power supply is good. We could always pull the CMOS and reset it, I suppose. Something is messed up on this thing. Just pulled the CMOS, we'll let that sit. The only other thing I'll test is put the cooler back on, plug everything back in and see if it'll power it up. When I pulled the cooler, I found that it is a three gigahertz i5 4430 CPU, uh, fourth gen Intel in there. So salvageable, sellable, maybe. Let's see if we can't get this system troll shot, reset the heat sink and go from there. Rethermal pasted this CPU. Let me turn it on. See if we can't get better temps. Check the BIOS out a little bit better. Hopefully nothing's messed up. All right, All right I'm in the BIOS. Temps look after the thermal paste. Our temps are holding steady at 42. This is great because it was going up to 80 something, 87. So that means that the thermal paste and reseeding this cooler worked Good. This board can only support a fourth gen CPUs, but that's fine, I guess. It's free. Onboard gigabit ethernet. Has some mild overclocking settings. It's got disc selections up here. This is good. Good to go. Let's exit out of here and save. All right. And of course, I'm gonna to have to test the SATA ports and stuff like that. There is no NVMe slot on this, but there is a PCI Express 16 slot and a 1X as well. So this is a good fourth gen quad core i5 CPU system, motherboard, power supply, everything works. I wonder if a disk drive ejects, and it does.
Let's try the next one. So far, so good. All right, everyone, this is the fifth of six free PCs. This one looks a little newer. You know, looks can be deceiving. It's not, it's just not that beat up. It says Diablo Tech case. It has a DVD writer CD RW in here, dual layer DVD. It says it's a i3, core i3, Asus, front USB. What's on the back? Not much, in fact. Looks like a generic power supply again. DVI output. VGA output, it has six USB ports, an ethernet port, and a combo, a PS2 port with your microphone audio out jack. Let's crack the case. Let's see what we have in here. It's a little scratched, but. And we have an Asus board. And right now, by looking at it, it tells me it's a PCI Express 2.0 16 slot. So that dates the system right there. Uh, one stick of RAM, and it's a Patriot stick. This is a Coolmax power supply. This is very cheap, cheap. Hopefully it, you know, starts up. There's something here that's interesting. There's two 120 millimeter fans in the system there in the front and one in the back. So if those fans work, that's pretty good bonus, right? Intel, CPU, we don't know if it's an i3, we don't know anything. Uh, there's two PCI uh, 1X slots. And without further ado, the only one thing left for the system, right? We need to power it up, see if it comes on, see what's inside the system. No hard drive. So system is powering on. Attempt to boot from BIOS LAN. All right, I am in the BIOS. This is nice. Nice. Let's see if we can give you a better shot of this BIOS. And with troubleshooting, you know, I don't have a capture, but this is what we have. We have an i3-2100 at 3.1 gigahertz. So that's older. BIOS is 2012, with four gig of memory, DDR3, 1333 megahertz, which is fine, I guess. Board can take second and third gen CPUs. So we could go to third gen CPU, you know, get rid of this i3, or let it go as it is, try to trade up, you know, build a basic system, trade up to a little bit better system perhaps, or not. Kind of froze up here. Maybe it's overheating. Froze up, guys. It could be overheating in the CPU, but let's shut this off for now. Reseeded the thermal paste. Reseeded the cooler because it was problematic. It was overheating. And now I can get into the monitoring of the system. You can't expect, rule of thumb tip, can't expect systems that you get for free or in a junkyard or whatever to have work. Don't expect the person who had it before you to have taken care of it at all. So took off the heatsink, cleaned off the old thermal paste, seeded it correctly, moved the RAM into the bank too, and then reseeded everything again. Now we're running at uh, 36 Celsius. That means that cooler wasn't seated correctly in old thermal paste. So this CPU is functional, knock on wood. And four gig of RAM. And it's got an auto tuner, boost, etc. That has a small, easy fix. Looks good. Uh, onboard monitoring is working. Has basic tools, the Asus flash utility, so. That one works. Just minor fixes so far. Temp is holding, which means what I did worked. We haven't stressed it though, but so far so good. And it's a crappy stock Intel heat sink cooler. This board has an i3 currently, second gen, but it can take a third gen uh, CPU as well, uh, depending on the BIOS, rev, etc. So we could flip this very minimal things, hard drive, OS, flip it. My goal is to flip these for a very little bit of money to try to get up to a little bit more functional PC. I think I saved the best for last. Come on, let's check it out. Let's go. It's time to test out this system behind me. It is a MSI 250M Pro motherboard. Supports sixth and seventh gen Intel CPUs. It's got eight gig of RAM from what I can tell. I don't know if it works. It's got an EVGA 600 watt power supply and a EVGA PCI Express 710 graphics card in here. And that's it. That's all there is, but this is a this is a throwaway PC and we're going to use the power supply tester first right there. 
It's got two 12 volt rails. Both are putting out 12.3 volt. Uh, five volt rail, it's five volts, and it's good. It's nothing wrong with it. I tested those. Let's plug it back in and see if we can get this thing to boot up. Fingers crossed. And it doesn't have any hard drive, and it did turn on. And let's see if we can get in the BIOS. I mean the BIOS. So the battery's good. It's got eight gig of RAM at 2133 megahertz. Now I have to pull the sticks to see if they actually, you know, function at that rate or not. Maybe they can go faster, but it's got some basic overclocking. It's the board MSI B250 Pro. Okay, great. Where is the processor? Here you go, specification CPU. This is an i5-6500 CPU at 3.2 gigahertz. Let's look this up and see what it is. Is it a quad core? Yes, it's a quad core. Four cores for a free PC. This is pretty cool. And you know what? This system right here, I haven't tested any more functions, but this system, is, it's a micro board. It has an NVMe slot. It has um, DDR4, sixth and seventh gen Intel CPUs. If everything's good, it's a nice little system. And the power supply works, 600 watt EBGA. This is a good score for a freebie. Yeah, it needs a maybe an optical drive and a hard drive, but maybe even try like a $20 NVMe, get that really speedy. This is a great find. And it's got a Antec case, but it didn't come with a door, which sucks. <laughs> it's an 80 plus uh, certified power supply, and it doesn't say that it's, you know, gold or anything on it, so. But this is an excellent one. Yes, trash or treasure.